Okay, question one. We've got an object performing simple harmonic motion around a central point O. We've got some cal some uh, statements about the acceleration. We're trying to work out which of those statements is correct. So let's just draw ourselves a little picture. We've got a center of oscillation O. We've got something that's doing a simple harmonic motion around this central point. Um, let's look at the options. So acceleration is always away from O. Well, if we find a point there, one thing we know about it, SHM is the acceleration is always back towards the center. So this one is definitely incorrect. Okay, it's the exact opposite of the truth. The acceleration is always towards O would be correct. Acceleration velocity are in the opposite direction. Well, there's the acceleration. Here's the point. So it could well be going that way, in which case that would be true. But on the other hand, it might be on the way back, in which case the acceleration of velocity would be in the same direction. So this one is sometimes true, but not always. The acceleration of the displacement from O is always in the same direction. Well, the displacement is in that direction, the acceleration is in that direction, so there's our X, there's our A. Clearly that's not correct, so that one's wrong. The graph of acceleration against displacement is a straight line. Well, we know acceleration equals minus 2 pi F all squared X. So acceleration is proportional to displacement. And in the opposite direction, you remember, the, remember this graph of A against X, which is a straight line through the origin with a negative gradient. So the correct answer for number one is D. Okay, question two. So which of the following gives the phase difference? So we're looking at phase difference here between velocity and displacement. Okay, easier really for us to draw the displacement graph first. So here's the displacement against time. And we usually draw this as a cosine graph. So there's our displacement time graph. To get a velocity time graph, well, remember velocity is the gradient of this graph. So here the velocity is zero. Here the gradient is uh, its maximum negative value. So that one's down there. If we just draw ourselves some little guidelines down here, it'll help us to just keep the two graphs lined up with each other. Here the, dis uh, the gradient of this graph is zero. So the velocity is zero again. Here it's a maximum positive value. So if we just join those points together for the velocity graph, our velocity graph looks like that. If you look at those two graphs to make this graph into this one, what I need to do is to move it this fraction along. Okay, a whole wave here is 2 pi up to there. What I've got is a quarter of that. So I've got a quarter of 2 pi, which is pi by 2. So the correct answer for that one is B. Okay, here we've got a slightly more complicated looking question. So we've got a particle slightly from uh, Q, set into oscillation, pulled it back to P, we've let it go. It's going from Q to R. It's subject to damping, so you'll notice it's not getting as far across here. Okay, we'll talk about damping at the end of this unit. Um, but this is the other um, extreme. It's come to rest momentarily here, so it's stopping over here. So it's gone from there to there. And the question says, where is the acceleration? Um, at its maximum value. Well, we know the equation for a max, a max equals minus 2 pi f squared times the um, amplitude. Well, clearly there is a maximum here, but the biggest one in the whole system is over here because this is where the amplitude is bigger. So the maximum acceleration is at p, which means the answer to this question is a. Okay, a body in simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 0.5 meters in a period of 4 pi seconds. What is the speed of, of the body when the displacement of the body is 0.6? So we're looking for an equation relating speed or velocity to displacement. Okay, that equation is V equals 2 pi F times the square root of A squared minus X squared. Um, the 2 pi F uh, we haven't got an f at the moment, so we've got to look for the period of 4 pi seconds. So the first thing we need to do really is here to do f equals 1 over t, so that's 1 over 4 pi. So if we put those numbers in, then we've got 2 pi times 1 over 4 pi times the square root of the amplitude, which is 0 0.5, minus the displacement, which is 0 0.3. Those are both squared. You can stick that in your calculator, but you might notice this is like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So that comes to 0 0.4. 2 pi over 4 pi is just 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.2 meters per second, which gives us the answer C.
Okay, question five is a longer answer question. So the conditions for simple harmonic motion, okay, two conditions. The acceleration is proportional to, excuse me, the displacement and also in the opposite direction. Okay, remember that's just summed up by this expression. Acceleration is proportional to the displacement in the opposite direction. Okay, so then we've got our specific example of SHM, a mass suspended on a vertical spring. The system is allowed to come to rest. Then you pull it down by 76 millimeters and release. The time taken for 25 oscillations is 23 seconds. So first step to work out the frequency, well that's why they've done this. So easier perhaps to understand to work out the period. The period is the time taken, 23 seconds, divided by the number of oscillations that took that time. All right, but again we know that F equals 1 over T, so that's the inverse of that 25 over 23, which is 1.09 hertz. The maximum acceleration, or just a little check there by the way, just over one because 25 oscillations in 23 seconds means we're getting more than one oscillation every second so just a little check there that you can see that is a number bigger than one. Uh, the maximum acceleration of the mass well again we know a max equals 2 pi f squared a so just put the numbers in there 2 pi times 1.09 square all that Multiply it by the amplitude. Well, this is why they've told us how far we've pulled it down. So that's 76 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, if we put that into a calculator, then we find the maximum acceleration is 3.56 meters per second squared. Okay, the displacement of the mass, 0 0.6 seconds after it's been released. So now we're looking for a connection between displacement and time. So that's the expression x equals a cos 2 pi f t. So this is an amplitude of 76 times 10 to the minus 3 times the cosine of um, 2 times pi times 1.09 times 0 0.6. And if you stick that in your calculator, then you find that you get minus 4.3 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay, let's not, not uh, forget to see the end of the question here, state the direction of this displacement. Well, the fact that this is a negative number here, what have we done? We've pulled it down, so here's our mass and our spring. We pulled it down by 76 millimeters. We've treated that as a positive number, so if it's now above there, it's up here somewhere. So it's above the equilibrium position. Okay, here's our last part. We've got a velocity time graph, and what they're asking us to do is to turn it, is to produce a displacement time graph for the same oscillation. So we can find some points here where the velocity is zero. So at zero, at half t, at t. Okay, these are the points where the velocity is zero. If the velocity is zero, then the displacement must be a maximum. At these points halfway in between these, then the velocity is maximum. That means the displacement must be zero. So these are the easiest points to put in first. Let's put in this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Slightly trickier if we look here, the velocity is a maximum negative value. Okay, if it's a negative value, then that means that the gradient of the displacement graph must be negative. So here it's going down, here it's going up. So if we join these up, we get a graph which looks like that. I've not drawn that very well, but I'm sure you've got the idea.